In today's video, we're going to talk about the one thing only and one thing that you should be spending 90% of your time focusing on doing and growing your coaching business. It would be this. If this is a topic that you're interested to hear more about, keep watching. We're going to talk about that today. to my channel i'm michelle your visibility marketing coach and today we are going to talk about why 90 percent of your time should be spending and focusing on just one of these area and that's going to ensure your coaching business is running smoothly and you are actually on the path to scale it and grow it without feeling like you're all over the place and you're not quite sure exactly where to begin and also how to actually make this happen. One thing I hear my client complain all the time is, Michelle, there are so many things that I have to do. Exactly what do I focus on and where do I begin? I know I want this business, but I'm just not quite sure how to make it happen because I have tons of stuff on my to-do list. If this is how you feel, you are not alone. So every thriving, successful coaching business has some essential components that you need to focus on. And so today we're going to break that into more tangible bite size so that you know exactly where your energy should go and how to make this happen. And if you are someone who's already running a successful coaching business, I would love to, for you to comment down below and let us know your strategy. There's a lot of people that's out there who can really benefit from learning and hearing from all your success secrets. So comment down below if you've been doing this for years and you have your success secrets, what is that one area that you're focusing on? Share that with us down below in the comment. All right, so every thriving coaching business has three essential area that I truly believe is what makes a coaching business successful. What are those three areas? You have the marketing, business, and finance. These three elements forms a perfect triangle that support the structure within your business. So let's take a look at the business area. So the business will encompass anything like the logistics, the operational aspects of how to create and operate your business. So what, are, what is it that you have to do on a day-to-day -day task? These are the things that you do within your business. Same with finance. Finance would be something that, well, how much cash flow do I have to bring in in order to support and keep this business running? Do I have any cash flow that's coming in? And do I have any clients who's coming in to support that finance aspects of my business? And so if you divide everything that's happening in your business, you can pretty much divide them into this perfect triangle. And they form a perfect triangle because none of it can exist without the support of the other. Now, now, this might not be completely new to you because a lot of us, when we enter our business, we think that business as a whole, and we don't even think about their areas that actually need, our, need more of our energy than other. Each of the leg on the triangle needs not all equal time and focus. Depending on the season of your business, you might need to focus on one area more so than another. So for example, if your business is already successful and you're running and you got a great team putting together, you might not need to focus all your energy on looking at the finance because you know that you're going to have some passive income coming in, you're going to have cash flow that's coming in, you have client on a regular basis who's coming in. So you might not need to spend a whole lot of time focusing on the finance aspects of your coaching business. Now, if you're someone who already have a team, maybe it's a general business manager, who take care of all the business operational aspects of your business that you wouldn't necessarily need to focus on a whole lot of business aspects of your perfect triangle. As a new coach, or maybe even up to the first five years or six years in your coaching business, the 90% of the time you should be focusing on marketing. And here's the reason why. Marketing essentially is the reason why your business is going to become successful because it attracts your client, it brings in the revenue and generate the cash flow so that your business and the finance can actually support each other 
because of the marketing that you've been focusing on. Without the marketing, your business operation and finance will actually struggle and keep up because you don't have any clients that's coming in to support your cash flow. You don't have any clients, and so no matter how many tasks that you're doing, it feels like you're just running in circle. You're spinning around, and it's actually not leading to the revenue or profit that you need it. So by spending ninety percent of your time ensuring that you have new blood, new leads that's coming into your business, then you can cultivate that relationship, and that relationship is going to come to fruition, which then you will become your client, and therefore it's going to support your finance and your business, and make sure that everything is in a perfect、uh, balance so that you can keep your business running. So for that reason, this is where a lot of coaches get tripped up on because they're focusing on the business and the finance. They're thinking, "Well, I don't have any client. I don't have money coming in." Well, the reason why you don't have any clients and business that's coming in because you're neglecting the marketing aspects of your business. If that is not happening, then your business and your finance, it's not going to happen at all. So essentially, if you're going to prioritize anything in your coaching business, what you should be prioritizing is your marketing. Your business operation has a purpose. Your finance health will stay secure, and that is all because you're focusing on marketing. Now I know many of you feel like, well, I didn't become a coach to to become a marketer, but marketing is not that hard. If you think about what you do on a daily activity, the moment that you wake up, you are doing marketing. There's a phrase that goes, "You are your brand," and the moment that you represent and start talking to strangers or prospects, you are doing marketing. And so, don't think that marketing requires some expertise. It just needs enough knowledge for you to actually understand what works, what doesn't work, what I need to track in order to make sure that. My marketing is healthy, and it's actually bringing some new client coming in, so that you can actually build this business on a healthy cycle, so that it supports your overall business growth. And by now, you might be thinking, "Okay, Michelle, that's great. I know that there's the perfect triangle, and I'm willing to jump in. I'm willing to spend and show up, and actually be my brand and start marketing. But exactly, how do I do that? So one of the easiest way to do marketing Marketing without social media is actually leverage speaking to grow your business. And honestly, this is a secret sauce that many coaches overlook. They overlook the power of speaking as a marketing tool. Most of us, when we think about marketing, we think about social media. We think about we need to create content. We need to do X, Y, and Z. Rarely does speaking engagement come into our mind until much later in the year. And my approach is completely different because I truly believe that one of the easiest things for you to do is actually speaking. Whether you want to be on podcast, webinar, masterclass, or just even doing YouTube videos like this, it's a great way of getting your ideal client, your potential client, to know, like, and trust you much easier than if you were spending all your day and time creating social media posts. Okay, so leveraging speaking is actually an opportunity not only to increase your visibility, but it also create that trust. It allows you to be positioned as a trusted expert because you have a focused topic that you always speak and talk about, and so it becomes easier for your potential client to get to know you, to like you, and actually trust you and wanting to work with you. I know speaking can be a little intimidating sometimes, but if you have Already started leveraging speaking. I would love for you to comment down below and let me know what topic you're speaking on. Because in my next video, I'm going to talk about why speaking everywhere and without a topic that represent your business that it's actually going to hurt you than than to help you. If you're interested to get started and you have no idea what topic to speak on, I actually have a great resource that you can download. Just simply comment or go to the description box down below. You'll be able to get a copy of the ten topics that every coach and speaker should be speaking on. So go ahead and grab that in the description box down below. So today we talked about the perfect triangle that makes a thriving, successful coaching business, finance, business, and marketing, and why ninety percent of your time you should be focusing on. Marketing, because that is the key of driving your business success. I also talked about how leveraging speaking might be the key 
to unlock that marketing and you don't have to focus just primarily on social media posting and how that could be potentially your way of getting yourself out there, make it visible so that your potential client can find you. If you found this video helpful, be sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so that when the new video comes out, you're not going to miss the episode. Until then, happy coaching, and I will see you in the next video.